Hello my soccer universe, what a mad weekend it was to start the new Serie A season, I went for the mad look, uh, in that case as well, I mean, of, I literally saw highlights of every game, I saw uh, five games more or less live, and it was sometimes really hard to choose because every game had a little story. Literally every game had a rather uh, interesting slash crazy story. There were maybe one or two and even there where it was not all that great. So I think we should uh, dive in immediately. I'm wearing Bologna. Not that they're the greatest team, but I, they had one of the more remarkable games. <laughs> Uh, this weekend. Um, I think one of the less remarkable games, I thought it was also remarkable, was Inter against Genoa uh, to start off the season uh, because it was a no contest from the get-go. The one thing that I really didn't, I don't know if I say I shouldn't, I didn't like, uh, but you know, that John Ogle suddenly is hailed as this great player. No, he's not. He's not. He had a great game. He scored a wonderful goal. He assisted the first one. Uh, but him being so sad and celebrating Inter Georgia just gets this Milan fan really the goal out. Uh, he is not that great of a player. And I still think, yeah, Inter looked convincing in many ways. However, it's Genoa. And against Genoa, Inter always look good. So uh, hold your horses on Inter for now. Um, we have to see. Uh, I mean, the other thing is that Arturo Vidal is the other player. I mean, um, suddenly he scores a goal and assist, like Ch like Ch 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 and uh, yeah, we have to see where where, where it goes. Uh, with uh, Hellas against Sassuolo, this was probably one, also one of the less interesting because Sassuolo always had a two goal lead that Hellas then put late back. Uh, but you know, five goals is nothing to sneeze at. Empoli had a one nil lead against Lazio. However, Lazio comes storming back um, uh, with uh, Milinkovic Savic immediately equalizing Lazari in an immobile penalty, pulling the game away. However, Torino against Atalanta, you remember, it was not too, too long ago. Atalanta, I think, won 7 1 at Torino. Uh, and they got an early goal through Muriel, but kind of looked a little bit lethargic all uh, along. Uh, and so it was not really un undeserved when Belotti, with a wonderful kick from far out outside of goalkeeper, maybe, we have to talk, 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 talk about that, gives them the equalizer. And I think Torino would have deserved a point out of the game. But then, local boy from Bergamo, Roberto Piccoli, come, comes down and scores the winner for Atalanta late on. Let's see where Atalanta goes. Uh, we know they're slow starters. I hope they uh, will not uh, stay that uh, slow because Atalanta, when they're clicking, a uh, 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 sight to behold. Bologna Salernitana. This must have been the craziest of them all. The craziest game of the entire uh, weekend. And we had some nuts games in there. But uh, if you haven't seen the highlights, I mean, uh, stop this video now, go watch highlights. And they come back, but um, it started. We had three red cards, we had five goals, we had turn, uh, turnarounds, twists and turns all across uh, the board. Um, and the first two red cards were all rather, rather, rather of them. Strandberg got, gets two yellows within a minute, and especially the second one is kind of really. Um, and so you think advantage Bologna. However, uh, then there's another one, and I still have not really seen the foul in the uh, replay. Soriano seemingly uh, with the elbow in the box uh, touches a Salernitana player, and this goes to VAR. I mean, and 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 the funny thing is that no one, absolutely no one, from Salernitana was complaining, but it goes to VAR. Pelle is given the yellow card, and uh, Soriano is sent off. Huh? And then the uh, and then Bonazzoli uh, scores the first Serie A goal for, for Salentano in over twenty years. So uh, that's something. But however, however, Bologna come back with uh, De Silvestri. I think he has not scored the, all that many goals uh, <laughs> for Bologna. He gets the e the equalizer after Sansone. Um, cor uh, corner kick. Um, however, Koulibaly 
who was, I think he came on a refugee boat to Italy. So uh, also one of those stories. Gives Salentana a really nice shot equalizer. I mean, um, the build-up, there were already a few chances that Bologna could kick, kick, kick about, but then Koulibaly uh, puts the ball into internet and it's 2-1 Salentana. And do you think the sensation is on hand? No. New Austrian signing, Marko Anatovic, uh, scores with a wonderful equal. I think he takes the ball with the right turn, turns around, shoots with the left. Uh, really great equalizer. And then uh, Del Silvestri uh, heads in another one. And he scores two, I think. I might be wrong, but he has only three Serie A goals ahead, ahead of that. So uh, rather interesting stuff uh, there. It's a 3-2 win. For Bologna, who clearly have defensive troubles, um, but you know, I said this might be the one chance that I get to wear this uh, great Bologna shirt that I have. Ah, and I forgot uh, Scouten, and that was probably the, the one red card that was full, full deserved, get sent off in the 88th. So, mad game. And at the same time, another mad game, Udine against Juve, where uh, Juventus now playing A without Ronaldo, and there was a whole lot of stuff about that. Did Ronaldo request that he did not play because he wanted to leave Juventus and he didn't want to get injured? Uh, then Juventus saying, no, no, this was in conjunction with the player because we wanted to play more counter-attacking, more vertical style and Ronaldo is maybe not uh, the perfect player for that. However it goes, I mean, the second one seems to be more credible because Ronaldo came on. If he didn't want to get injured, he shouldn't have played from the beginning. In any case, Juventus actually, yeah, can't counter attacking, but looked uh, good uh, scoring goals through the ball and Quadrado um, to have it 2 0 up. And everyone thought that uh, Juve will be cruising now to a win. And then Chesney happened. First of all, he concedes a penalty. A penalty. I mean, he should have caught, caught the ball in him. He, he wants to catch it, brings out the Uni player Pereira, uh, he, uh, makes the, takes the penalty. And then late on, the ball gets played back to him. I think you could call this a Kreuftan that he wants to get himself out of trouble. And then uh, plays it uh, directly to Okako. Uh, and it, it goes, to, uh, who, 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 who puts it on to Deo Lefeo. Who puts it from a very odd angle into the net it's two to Udine and then suddenly Udine was pressing and probably would have deserved the win. However, the goal was scored by Ronaldo who had come on. Uh, wonderfully headed goal, it's got to be said, and he missed a, a header before before that where I thought, well, that's actually his range where he actually usually makes it. Um, promise he was a fraction of sight and uh, to add insult to injury because he was seemingly the winner. He stormed off, threw off his shirt and got a yellow card and that yellow card is not getting rescinded. So rather, rather interesting stuff as well. Uh, an interesting game also between Roma and Fiorentina and you see already, I mean, I can't talk about any game here. It, is, it was just crazy yesterday. Uh, not uh, this weekend, not only yesterday. Yesterday was actually kind of calmish. Um, where, you know, everyone looking at Mourinho, and to be honest, Roma maybe kept it a little bit too calm, Mourinho esque, but then uh, Tim Abraham happened, uh, who got, uh, and now I know he's called Drongowski, not Dragowski, Drongowski, uh, similar like P Piontek. He got him sent, sent, uh, got him sent, sent off because there was a ball played uh, that he was not offside, and Rongowski just takes him down and with that speed, yes, there was only a little touch, but um, goalie come coming out, it's gonna be a red card all day long. So I think uh, that that was kind of expected. Then, uh, so Roma has the man ad advantage again, uh, trying to more control the game. I mean, it was not the Roma uh, game that from last season, where they were a little bit more, pro more, more proactive, but suddenly Abraham again, and he had just arrived in Rome. I mean, it, it, it was a great day debut. Just plays a ball into Mkhitaryan, and everyone thinks he is miles offside, and then he's just by a fraction not. And it's 1-0 for Roma. And what the world is then Roma doing? Hanging back, uh, and Milenkovic gets an equalizer for Fiorentina, at which point uh, Roma was also down to 10 men, because Saniolo, who actually I thought made a great comeback, but you know, getting two ye yellow cards, and the second one was one, getting sent off. Uh, so, yeah, I think at that point, I think they tried to get this uh, home. No, 
Milenkovic makes it 1-1. Uh, However, again, Abraham happened and uh, plays another pass where you, again, you thought it's offside. But I, I think that, that, that doesn't be in build-up. So, a uh, pass to Abraham. Uh, seemingly offside. No, it was not. And plays, plays it over to Vertu, who scores against his former team. Again, the goal was initially not given, but had, had to be turned around. And then... Um, uh, Abraham comes on. I think he even hit the bar with a header, uh, with huge applause from the Roma fans. Uh, and then uh, Jomodorov comes on, and he ha also had an immediate impact because he assisted Overtu for his second goal. Roma running three-one winners. Uh, Napoli <laughs> having a game to forget more, more or less. First of all, you miss the chances uh, against Venezia. Uh, then. You get Victor Ozyman uh, sent off for, honestly, there was, yeah, it was a push, but that was not a red card. Um, and then you get a penalty and Insigne misses that one. However, a few minutes later, he gets another one, converts and Elif Elmas gives the Napoli the win. Caleri find themselves 2-0 down against Spezia for no particular reason that, except that they had bad defending. Other than that, they just could not convert their chances. But then rather, rather quickly, uh, the 2-0 through Bastoni was in the 58th minute. 60 second, uh, Joao Pedro with a long range shot, e e equalizing four minutes later, uh, penalty is given and um, not equalizing, okay, pulls back. And then he e the e equalized and then was no winner. I think Spezia almost had scored the winner, but then was taken off for offside. So uh, I think... Cagliari was the more proactive team, but maybe all overall the draw was not that bad. And then what can I say about Milan's uh, win at Sampdoria? Um, it was an interesting because Sampdoria seemingly had uh, was the more proactive team in many ways. And this Damsgaard guy is really, really dangerous, I have to say. I, I mean, he or, or, or at the Euros, he, he was quite, quite good. Uh, there's something growing there. But then you could also see that with Mike Magnon, uh you really have the threat. And he had had already with, with, with Donnarumma to send from your own box someone into the uh, attack. I mean, there was a big chance from, from, from Leao. And then also the goal came that way. But... Um, that was assisted by uh, Samp Sampdoria greatly because uh, first Calabria, the way he can get to, to, to the ball and then the shot by Brian Diaz out there didn't look good there. 1-0 Milan in the 8th minute. And then I have to say, it was the only one goal in that game, but there should have been more. Uh, I think uh, Giroud missed chance changes, but also Sam Sam Sampdoria had quite a few... Um, Overall, it did not look from, look from Milan uh, perspective not yet quite perfect, but I really thought they had a second goal in them. To be fair, I think Sampdoria should have scored a goal as well. I think, especially the first first, it was thoroughly entertaining. It's like I peed it out then a little bit too early to, to, to say, but I think if this would have been a 2 1 or 3 2, I think this would have been more representative of that game. So yeah, uh, it was a wild weekend. I think since not much changed, I mean, the expected standings, the only thing that uh, of note that really changes is Inter, uh, because you would draw to other points, Inter now the, fav the favorites, but I think I will leave you with all the stats on that to end this video, and yeah. I mean, this was entertaining as can be, and I really hope this continues this way. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.